Hi friends, so in this video we'll be looking at the Alakine's defense. It's one of the responses against 1e4. It's a little bit offbeat and unusual, which may catch your opponents off guard, but at the same time, it also avoids a lot of the mainline opening theory and also leads to very imbalanced positions, which you can definitely play for a win. So I hope you enjoyed this video and stick around to the end, you should have a complete working repertoire. I'll see you in a few seconds. So we'll start things with the least common responses, such as knight to c3. After this you have two options, one is pawn to e5. If you're familiar with the Vienna from the black side, then this is a very solid option. Otherwise you can play the standard pawn to d5. White can push or play pawn takes. If he pushes, then we can play the move either d4 or knight f to d7. Knight f to d7 is good if you want to go for something that's a little bit more imbalanced and want to play for a win. Here, for example, if white goes for a pawn sack with e6, then we can just capture d4, c5, knight f3, knight c6. So the whole point of white's pawn sacrifice here is to sort of soften the light squares. And we can see that he might play the bishop to d3, and there might be some threats later on along this diagonal. He's also trying to create a positional bind to make it difficult for us to develop the dark squared bishop. But as you'll see, there's also a drawback to this and that's black can easily get a very mobile pawn center if white is not careful. So we can play the move pawn to g6 to try and develop that bishop. And let's say for example white tries knight to d4, we can play knight f6, bishop b5, let's say we defend the knight, queen c7, castles, bishop g7, and already you see that black is threatening to play the move pawn to e5 next, and start rolling the pawns in the center of the board. So this can be very dangerous. If instead white goes for something a little bit sharper with h4, trying to target black's king side, then we can continue bishop g7, h5, let's say knight takes c5. And for example, if white goes for the exchanges, then after the move bishop to d3, we'll see that we can actually just sacrifice this pawn on g6 and safely tuck our king away in the center of the board. So for example, let's say we take and then play queen a5, and if bishop takes, yes, we've lost our kingside pawns, but the king is actually relatively safe on the d7 square. And as long as the center doesn't open up, so let's say bishop d2, we can play the move queen a4 to stop c4 from being played. And next move, we'll play the move b6, followed by bishop a6 and rook g8. And you see that the pawns do a great job of keeping the king here safe in the center of the board. If instead bishop d3, then, well, black can continue with the move pawn to e5, for example, threatening pawn to e4 next. So black definitely has his counterplay in this line. If instead at the start, black opts for the move pawn to d4 instead. So this line is meant to be very equal. So if white goes to move knight to e2, then we can always play knight g4, and f4 is met by c5, and black has no problems in this particular position. So instead, often white will take on f6, black will capture back, and then this line is meant to be very drawish, because after captures here, captures here, the queens are off, and the small imbalances in the position shouldn't be uh, too much here. So it, it's just fairly equal after castles. If at the start of the game, after knight c3, d5 instead of white captures, then we capture back. And bishop c4 is well met by the move knight to b6. Bishop goes back, and here black has two great options. One is to play c5, threatening c4. And the other option is to play knight c6, but you have to try and remember to develop your light square bishop outside the pawn chain before you lock it in with the move pawn to g6. And if white tries to stop it with the move queen to f3, then you will have to play e6, but I think black has a very solid setup here, so there shouldn't be any issues after bishop e7. I don't think white's attack is that dangerous here. So a more popular approach is to play the move pawn to e5, after which we move the knight to d5, and here white can play the move knight to c3, but then black will always just capture here, followed by the move 
pawn to d5 and I think this is a very solid way to play for black just putting the pawn on d5 pawn on c5 developing the knight and we sort of get a good version of the French in some ways if instead white goes for something along the lines of c4 chasing our knight then after the move knight to b6 if he tries c5 which leads to a very interesting pawn sacrifice line here black shouldn't be too worried because we play the move knight to d5 and after bishop c4 e6 white's idea is to play the move knight to c3 so this is a very interesting line and of course we need to accept the sacrifice if we want to try and refute it so we take and after the captures then firstly we play the move knight to c6 to try and force white's pieces to slightly um, worse squares so here white plays the move bishop to f4 and here black can capture the pawn on c5 white's idea is to play queen to g4 and here we can actually just drop the bishop back to f8 and it does look good for white after the move knight to f3 d5 castles but i think black has a very solid setup here we can continue with the move queen e7 and play h6 bishop d7 maybe castle the king to the queen side and practice has shown that black has a um, very good result scoring from this position onwards so another critical line here for black is to face the four points attack which continues after d4, c4, knight b6, and f4 here for white. Here we should try and challenge the center with our pieces. Firstly, we capture and then play the move bishop to f5, knight c3, e6, bishop e3, knight c6, knight f3. So white is trying to push us off the board with um, the very strong pawn center and gain a lot of space there. So we can try to challenge it with the move pawn to f6 by playing bishop to e7. We're not really worried about d5 as long as you know what you're doing here. And we can follow up with the move pawn to f6 later and then recapture with the bishop attacking the center. And this line is definitely playable, but I feel it's a little bit passive. So instead, I'm going to recommend something a little bit different, starting with bishop to b4 here. The idea is that Black is going to play the move knight to a5 next and put pressure on white's c pawn, trying to force white to push it and maybe get some squares for his pieces in the center of the board. It's a lesser known line and it's objectively maybe not the best, but it does pose white a lot of practical problems to solve. So after rook c1, we can play knight a5, a3, and here black can even just take the pawn on c4. And for example, a game continued here, bishop to g5, black can just capture on c3, and then play the move queen to d5. And it looked like white was winning a piece after bishop takes c4, knight takes c4, queen a4 check, but black can play the move pawn to b5 here, protecting the knight and attacking the queen at the same time. So we're perfectly fine here. Another option played was bishop to e2. Again, we played a move knight to a5. c5 was played. And here knight d5 could be an option, but knight c4 was played in this game. Queen a4 check. If the bishop goes back to c1, then I think black can just castle kingside and then capture here, followed by the move pawn to b6 to challenge the pawns on the queen side followed by queen d5 and this is okay after queen a4 check in the game c6 was played if white captures the bishop on b4 then we'll capture the bishop on e3 so this is okay and after bishop c1 bishop takes b3 b takes b3 um, in the particular game black was also doing okay if instead bishop to d3 then we can play a very interesting move we can go bishop to g4 creating pressure on the d4 pawn here if a3 then we can first capture on f3 which forces white to capture with the g pawn because it captures with the queen then he always has problems with the d pawn he also has tactics such as knight takes e5 he has to deal with for example queen f3 bishop takes c3 pawn takes c3 knight e5 is probably the simplest to win some material. If white captures here, we capture it back. 
So when he captures with the g-pawn, we can play the move bishop to e7 here, attacking the d4 pawn, and after knight e2, we can play the move bishop check, king f1, and queen d7, followed by queenside castling. And I think black has a very interesting position here with the king in the center. And we're about to play f6, but at the same time, white has a very dangerous queenside attack. So it's a very double-edged setup here. So now we'll look at some of the most common options for white after pawn to e5, knight d5, d4, d6, and knight f3, which is one of the main moves here. And from here on, black actually has a couple of different structures and a couple of different plans he can opt for. And depending on what you want to go for, you can uh, choose what best suits your situation and style of play. So for example, the first one I suggest you do not play is pawn to g6 because in this particular position after g6 bishop c4 knight b6 bishop b3 bishop g7 white can play the move knight to g5 which is very very strong here attacking f7 and provoking the move pawn to e6 again white puts pressure with the move queen to f3 hitting our f7 pawn and if we play the move queen to e7 to defend then white can follow up with the move knight to e4 which is very very dangerous because bishop g5 is coming next move. So I would definitely stay clear of this and on move 8 white can even play the move pawn to f4 just gaining space and this is also very very strong. So if instead of g6 you can play some other options including pawn takes on e5 which is a little bit more solid. After knight takes here you could play the move pawn to g6 if you wanted. You should play it in this move order because after bishop c4, you can play the move pawn to c6. Castle is bishop g7 and castles here. And this is slightly different because black's plan here is to sometimes trade off these light squared bishops, as we'll see in this particular example. The bishop will go to e6 often and the knight will drop back to c7. And we'll bring the other knight to d7 to chase away the knight on e5 but eventually black's goal is to push in the center with either e5 but usually c5 and that's how he will gain counterplay for example in this game with Svidla playing black after knight f3 knight d7 white played the move pawn to h3 and then Svidla simply took took and then played the move bishop to e6 so ready to challenge for control along this diagonal. And after the bishop went to b3, Peter dropped the knight back to c7, offering this trade. Rook e1 was played and here looked for an opportunity, as I mentioned, to hit in the center. So he played move bishop takes b3, pawn takes, and then immediately the move pawn to c5. So we see after move pawn to c5, white can't capture it because black will take the queens off and then capture the knight in the center of the board. So this was the ideal opportunity for black to get counterplay and uh, went on to win. So another option earlier on, instead of g6, you can also play c6 with the intention of bringing the bishop to f5. Okay. So this is particularly strong as well against bishop to e2 because after this we can play the move bishop to f5 immediately, castles, knight d7, knight goes to f3, e6, c4, knight goes back to f6 and this is a very solid option for black. I mean we can even play knight e4 to trade off some pieces or we can just develop our pieces with either bishop d6 or h6 to try and preserve the light squared bishop and overall this structure is just very very solid. So if we go back to bishop c4, here we can play again the move knight to d7 and go for a very similar idea. The knight will go to either b6 or f6 and then we will develop the other bishop out to f5 or g4 and this would be totally fine. Another option on move 4 is to play bishop to g4 bishop to e2, and then play e6, castles, bishop e2, and go for this structure. So one thing to remember in the Alakines, as we'll see a lot 
later on is that this key idea is to play the move pawn to d5 often to put pressure on white's center and if white chases our knight we have to be prepared to bring the knight back to the c8 square here if white captures on d5 that's not really an issue because we can just take back and we have a lot of squares for our pieces so often white will try and push us off the board gaining a lot of space and here it's important that we throw in the move bishop takes f3 first the idea is that we want to provoke g takes so if bishop takes here then we always have the option of playing knight to c4 winning important tempo hitting the bishops on e3 and also the pawn on b2 so after g takes we can play the move knight to c8 f4 and here knight c6 b4 a6 is a very critical line in this particular variation because here if black is able to maneuver this knight from c8 all the way to the f5 square and gain a blockade maybe play f6 and attack the center then black's position should be totally fine so this will be the challenge here in this particular setup okay so now let's move to the other main line with rook c1 so now we'll go to the main line exchange variations for white so after d4 d6 c4 knight b6 here white has two main options here as well one is to play knight f3 and one is to take on d6 and I'm going to suggest very similar ideas and setups just because it's a lot easier to remember and I think it's um, a very effective plan as well. So for example, if knight to f3 here, I'm suggesting we stick with the move pawn to g6 in this structure, with the pawn on c4 and d4 that is. We take back with the c pawn, so you can take back with the e pawn, but I find those positions very unpleasant, um, especially you shouldn't do it if you've already decided to fianchetto as well. So here we continue with bishop g7, bishop e3 castles, bishop e2, and the plan I'm going to give you here is to develop the light squared bishop and eventually we want to play the move pawn to d5 in the center, as you'll see, and we're going to play a maneuver which I mentioned in the previous line. So here if we're allowed to bring the bishop to g4, we should bring the bishop to g4. If we're not, maybe we can bring the bishop to f5 instead. But bishop g4 would be ideal to put pressure on c4 and after the move castles we can let's say play knight c6 putting pressure on the center if we're chased we always have the move knight to a5 to put pressure on c4 if we need so white will often play the move pawn to b3 and here our idea is to play pawn to d5 hitting in the center right away and trying to um, force white to close it up so after the move c5 here, our idea we play knight to c8 and we will give up our bishop for this knight next move. So for example h3 we capture and then we'll play the move pawn to e6 followed by our knight maneuver to e7 and then f5 where we put pressure on this um, d4 pawn and also threaten to maybe win back the bishop pair by capturing on e3. We do have to watch out for white's queenside pawn advance but in general black is usually okay there because b5 is often met by knight a5 where we'll get a square on c4 to play for and if white tries to play the move let's say pawn to g4 to try and stop our knight from getting to the f5 square then we can often open up the center with the move pawn to f5 which will be in our favor so this is a very effective plan which you should definitely keep in mind. So after knight b6, if white tries to take immediately on d6, then I would again suggest we take with the c pawn. If you take with the e pawn, I feel that these positions can be very unpleasant, especially after knight c3, bishop e7, bishop d3 plan from white, and let's say castles, knight to e2, and white will just play the move bishop to e3, maybe play h3, maybe play b3, and it's just very hard for black here to put pressure on white's center. It's just very, very solid. So I feel c takes is the way to go for sure. 
and after knight c6 we continue g6 and if you notice the structure hasn't changed too much if white plays knight f3 we'll go back into something very similar so the only way to deviate is to play rook c1 and after castles b3 is the main option and here I'm actually suggesting one of my recommendations which is bishop to f5 on this particular move this is a very interesting option here just waiting for white to play knight f3 because we can't play bishop g4 just yet which is white's main idea here so if knight f3 now then we can play the move pawn to d5 and after the move pawn to c5 we can drop the knight back to c8 bishop e2 knight c6 castles and we actually lose a tempo with the move bishop to g4 here but we can see that white's tempo with the move rook to c1 is probably not overly that useful because at the moment the c file is closed off so we can afford to lose some time and after h3 we again capture on f3 bishop captures e6 followed by the move knight to e7 and once the knight gets to f5 worst case we'll capture the bishop on e3 and we'll get some sort of opposite color bishop position here but black has absolutely no problems here whatsoever so that concludes my look into the alakine's defense and i hope i've given you a general understanding of some of the ideas and the setups on how to play it from the black side and i've also included a pgn file with some more of my annotated games which i've looked through in the past which may also help you if you're thinking of playing this line thanks for watching this video and i look forward to seeing you on the next one take care